Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Ice X or Ice Exercise is the U.S. Navy's prominent training program designed to assess its submarine readiness in polar regions. Submarines navigate stealthily for months, all the way from home port stations to resurface in these frozen regions. Upon arrival, the crew prepares to set up in their temporary camps, where they will spend several weeks. Their mission includes firing and recovering torpedoes using advanced techniques, collecting data for research, and training to operate efficiently in this challenging environment. An essential aspect of the ISEX operations is Arctic diving. This critical exercise involves highly specialized training and execution. Arctic diving operations, often referred to as ice diving, require divers to navigate through freezing temperatures and treacherous conditions. This training is indispensable for ensuring the safety and efficiency of both divers and operations during real deployments. Participants in Arctic diving training undergo rigorous instruction in techniques specific to icy conditions. Hey, do you guys hear that? They learn how to safely navigate beneath thick layers of ice, using specialized equipment and communication systems to maintain contact with the surface. Additionally, divers are trained to handle emergencies, such as equipment malfunctions and rapid changes in environmental conditions. Arctic diving also emphasizes the importance of mental and physical resilience. Divers must be prepared and not panic when finding themselves stuck below thick ice sheets, almost completely isolated from the surface. Another layer of difficulty is added during the torpedo recovery and defueling exercise after firing a torpedo in the Arctic. The dive team is now on a mission to retrieve the weapon from beneath the ice. The operations team has already determined its position. Divers and equipment are transported by helicopter to the expected endpoint, where the torpedo is supposed to run out of fuel. <laughs> Upon arrival, the personnel set up makeshift structures similar to ice fishing huts and cut a hole to allow the divers to enter and exit the icy waters. The dive team then swims toward the motionless torpedo and carefully brings it back to the entry hole. The weapon is then hitched to a cord and lifted from the water by a helicopter. 
Once on shore, the Naval Undersea Warfare Center defuels the torpedo by removing any remaining fuel or explosive material. This mitigates potential hazards and ensures safe handling for the future. Ice poses numerous challenges beyond the low temperatures, whether in the polar regions or habitat areas. Ice is inherently breakable, which can become a grave risk for anyone who falls through. Understanding this danger, firefighters undergo regular ice rescue training to prepare for emergencies. During these exercises, participants learn how to safely navigate icy terrain, assess risks, and execute rescue operations efficiently. One of the techniques firefighters use in ice rescue is the rope technique. Firefighters first secure themselves with a rope attached to stable terrain surrounding the ice. Wearing ice rescue suits, gloves, boots, and helmets, they carefully slide in a calculated manner across the ice to reach the trapped individual. <laughs> Sliding minimizes resistance on the ice and helps avoid breakage. Once there, they learn how to safely extricate the victim from the hole and bring him back to safety through rope lines. Another method of pulling victims from the ice involves using an inflatable ice skiff, commonly employed by the U.S. Coast Guard. This versatile tool is particularly useful in ice rescue operations, especially when the individual in distress is unconscious. The inflatable ice skiff enables rescuers to reach the victim and transport them to safety swiftly. Alternatively, if the individual is conscious, the USCG might deploy a Mars-SARS shuttle board. This board is sent to the trapped individual along with a rescuer who assists the victim in getting on board. Serving as a stable platform for rescue, the board is then pulled by the remaining rescuers using attached ropes. The Coast Guard also relies on helicopters to rescue people in distress. On the evening of October 25, 2020, three boatmen found themselves trapped in the icy grip of the Taku River, Alaska. As soon as the U.S. Coast Guard received the distress call, they swiftly moved to the area to rescue the stranded boaters. It was a challenging mission. The boat was stuck in approximately one foot of ice, five miles northeast of the Hole in the Wall Glacier, where the air temperature was 31 degrees, with 23 mile per hour winds and visibility limited to approximately half a mile. These conditions posed significant challenges for the Coast Guard Air Station Sitka MH-60 Jayhawk helicopter crew.
Yet, by leveraging their expertise, the Coast Guard crew succeeded in hoisting the stranded individuals from their boats one by one. When all three boatmen were safely aboard the helicopter, the rescue personnel airlifted them to safety at Juneau Airport. In another remarkable display of its capabilities, the Coast Guard mobilized its polar icebreakers for complex rescue operations, notably vessel rescue. During a mission on July 12, 2014, the crew of the Coast Guard Cutter Healy, a polar icebreaker, demonstrated their prowess and vessel recovery. While on a National Science Foundation-funded research expedition, they received a distress call from a man aboard a 36-foot sailboat trapped in Arctic ice approximately 40 miles northeast of Barrow, Alaska. In coordination with North Slope Burrow Search and Rescue, the Coast Guard swiftly responded. Upon reaching the location, the Healy's crew skillfully maneuvered to pull the boat from the ice creating a safe passage for its navigation. Cutter Healy also played a pivotal role in supplying remote areas with essential products. One notable example is the escorting of the Russian tanker Rinda to deliver 1.3 million gallons of petroleum products to the Western Alaskan community. The operation involved breaking a path through 300 miles of ice, with thickness ranging from one to five feet, to deliver much needed fuel to Nome. Roger, Healy weather report to follow. Wind direction, 176 degrees true. Healy's powerful engines and reinforced hull enabled the safe passage of Rinda for the resupply of essential goods to remote areas. On a normal day, Cutter Healy is busy conducting a wide range of research activities and maritime security in the polar regions. Designed with a reinforced hull and powerful engine, Healy bears immense power, is capable of continuously breaking through four to five feet thick ice at three knots, and can operate in temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Healy can accommodate a crew of up to 87, including up to 50 scientists. As the United States' largest and most technologically advanced polar icebreaker, Healy provides the scientific community with unique laboratories. Here, scientists have all the potential equipment that they might need for their research and explorations biochemical, electronics, meteorological, photography. All the laboratories have been fitted with state-of-the-art equipment to facilitate scientific endeavors. From studying marine ecosystems to analyzing atmospheric conditions, Cutter Healy's laboratories offer scientists unparalleled resources for conducting groundbreaking research in the polar regions. crew helps scientists conduct their studies by deploying equipment to collect samples and data from the subject studies. In addition to its research capabilities, Cutter Healy plays a crucial role in law enforcement, as well as maintaining collaboration and stability in the Arctic. While Healy is deployed to the Arctic, the second icebreaker of the U.S. Coast Guard, Polar Star, is tasked with breaking ice in Antarctica. Commissioned in 1976, the Polar Star is the United States' only operational heavy icebreaker, capable of breaking ice up to 21 feet thick. 
reserved for Operation Deep Freeze each year. The ship spends the winter breaking ice in the southern hemisphere. When the mission is complete, it returns to the dry dock in order to conduct critical maintenance and repairs in preparation for the next Operation Deep Freeze mission. During a typical deep freeze operation, Polar Star travels more than 26,350 miles to arrive in the Antarctica vicinity, where it cruises through 500 miles of packed ice to create navigable channels to base stations. This creates safe passage for resupply vessels and allows the delivery of millions of pounds of cargo and fuel. About 150 USCG crew members support these operations, clearing the path, orchestrating logistics, and assessing and inspecting foreign research stations, installations, and equipment in Antarctica. The inspection serves to ensure adherence to the Antarctic Treaty and its environmental protocol. This involves confirming compliance with regulations prohibiting military activities and mineral exploitation while promoting safe station operations and environmentally sustainable practices. U.S. icebreakers' presence in the polar regions demonstrates the United States' commitment to supporting international agreements and promoting scientific exploration in one of the world's most pristine and challenging environments. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.